Right now I'm about as happy as a very clean pig. I have had a really, really tough week. But none of that matters really. I'm here to make a video for you and that's what I'm going to do. Um, so today marks the start of Eating Disorders Awareness Week. And if you weren't aware, then I've had an eating disorder for just over 16 years. That's longer than I thought. That's over half my life. I'm, I'll be 32 next weekend. It's, so it's a few weeks ago for you watching this. I'll be 32 on the 11th of February and I developed an eating disorder when I was 15. So that's 15, 17 years. This year's Eating Disorders Awareness Week has a theme about early intervention and the importance of it, which is something that I'm very supportive of because although I had early intervention as such, I had spent six to eight months eating pretty much nothing and nobody really did anything. And then I was sent to a psychiatrist, I think, and was admitted to hospital for nine months, but it was disastrous because they didn't treat the eating disorder. They were just fascinated by all my malament by all my other mental stuff and physical stuff as well because I thought I was faking being able to get out of school but that's a whole nother story. So I thought I would make a video talking about the importance of early intervention and also if you have just been and to give some advice to people who have just been diagnosed with eating disorders or some if you know someone who has just been diagnosed or you may suspect has an eating disorder just some tips from somebody who's been there for a very long time. The first thing I'm going to say can pretty much be life advice for anyone but it's especially important when you have an eating disorder, and that is to be honest. I think people with eating disorders in general have the label of being dishonest and sneaky. I've always been very open about my eating disorder and about what I'm doing, my habits. It's important to be honest because if you're lying about what you're doing, what you're eating, your weight, then the professionals won't be able to treat you accordingly and you could end up risking your life if you're lying about quite dangerous things such as purging and laxatives and um, what you're eating. If you're And if you're um, manipulating a weight, then people may not take you as seriously, sadly. If you require emergency intervention and, you, and you've been manipulating a weight, then it's not going to get done. So that's bad. And so yeah, being honest about, about what you're doing, about also about how you're feeling, talking to the people that are helping you, talking to your family or friends, trying to be as open as possible, because the more open you are, the more they're going to be get a better understanding of you, of where you're coming from, of what you're going through. The next thing I'm going to say is probably something that people are going to be like, uh, no, you can't do that. But that is let the professionals do the weighing. Do not weigh yourself. Nothing good can come from stepping on the scales. If you lose weight, then it will never be enough. If you've gained weight, you're just going to hate yourself. If you have to be weighed, let the professionals do it. Or if you're not under a treatment team, let your family do it. If you're doing it on your own, then I would say don't do it. Avoid the scales because you become fixated by that number. This is coming from someone who used to weigh themselves several times a day. And it got to a point a few years ago where people were only judging me on my weight. And the treatment team that I was seeing at the time weren't listening to what I was saying. If I was struggling but my weight had gone up, they didn't believe me. If I was doing well and my weight had gone down, they didn't believe me. Um, and I was punished accordingly for both of those uh, by having support taken away. Judging yourself by the number, especially if you're going into recovery, if you're starting the refeeding process, your weight will be all over the place. You can drop, shoot up, and it is very, very distressing. So take that factor away. Sometimes it can be hard at first, but trust me, the pressure and the weight that is lifted off of your shoulders, no pun intended, is incredible so do it the next thing i want to talk about is comparing yourself to other people um, this is in terms of both other people around you other people with eating disorders without and the media i think most of you know by now that mm, very few images in the media are real photoshop and all of that jazz what people are now able to do is they are used able to use those tools in their own hands so for things like instagram photos there are a billion apps that you can use to manipulate how you look and enhance things, slim things down, make things bigger. If, unless you're seeing someone in real life, chances are they don't look the same as that unless they're a fucking wizard at contouring. Try and keep in mind that what you're seeing isn't real. Also in terms of yourself, people with eating disorders have a distorted set sense of perception with their body, with their face and also within themselves. This kind of goes in hand with the next point I'm going to talk about. With eating disorders there is always, there is often an element of kind of, not competition, but of comparison and 
if they're if you're seeing people who either do or don't have eating disorders talking a lot about what they're eating the numbers calories their weight their measurements and you're comparing yourself to that you have to remember that every single person is individual each person is individual and within that every person with an eating disorder their eating disorders have individual traits and they are unique I am five foot eleven. I'm very tall, and my lowest weight is some people's highest weights. I've never been able to fit into size zero clothing. I, I am tall, and I have a bigger frame. And it's always been hard for me seeing people that are like tiny and petite that can fit into tiny little jeans and have like smaller frames. But unless I physically break a bone off of my body, I'm not going to be able to achieve that. And that leads on to my next point, and that is about social media pages, recovery social media pages, um, such as the eating disorder community on Instagram, Tumblr. I don't know if there's anything on Twitter. The main source of it being on Instagram. I know that some people can fight that these are good things and that you're able to talk about things openly. That's all very well. However, um, I was on Instagram when the eating disorder community first came about and I was on talking terms with some of the girls that started it. And whilst it started off as a very friendly, positive thing, it became something very dark and dangerous and I still believe that it is that to this day. People can say anything, people can write anything, people can take pictures and it's not themselves, they can manipulate pictures as I said. And also, even if you're coming from a positive place and saying something positive or talking about food, other people reading that might take that in a negative way um, and they might read something in that in it that they will use to fuel their eating disorder. I honestly do not see, if you truly want to recover, if you truly want to get better and be free of the illness, I don't believe that something like Instagram is a positive thing and there is any place for it. That's my opinion. I know that that is very divisive and people probably shout at me for that, but I've seen some really dark things. Um, I've encountered some complete manipulators and liars and people, these people had tens of thousands of followers and I found out that they were lying and they weren't who they say they were. People invested their lives in these people who were, I suppose they were essentially catfishes. It was really sad to see. The other thing that really affected me was sometimes when people comment on your photos, you look through to their profile and have a look at them and if, because if you notice their name kind of flop. I tended to block people that were kind of pro Anna, but this person was commenting on a lot of my videos and I could tell by their language that they were quite young. So I looked on their profile, The whole her whole profile was basically body checking photos, photos of herself uh, naked but covering herself up, saying very dark eating disorder fueled things. But the scary thing is she was only 11. There was very naked photos of her. It just really upset me because she had an open profile, anybody could have seen this shit. I sent her a message and just warned her and told her to be careful and maybe speak to her parents, but she she didn't reply. I wouldn't expect I didn't expect her to, but it's it's scary that kind of shit. I think there's now a few more measures in place, but all you have to do is take a look at some of the eating disorder hashtags and they're fucked up. I mean I have an Instagram account now. I just use it mainly to promote my channel. I don't use it to talk about my eating disorder. I just use it as an Instagram account linked to my A to Z of my mental head brand, is that the right word? Because I have my blog, my YouTube channel and the Instagram account. The next thing that I've got on my list, which I think is very important, that's go at your own pace. I know it's difficult when you've got a treatment plan in place from a team to, you have to kind of follow their rules, especially if you're an adolescent, but understanding that making very slow and steady progress is better than making massive leaps and then falling backwards. Again, don't compare yourself to what other people around you are doing, other people with eating disorders. Focus on yourself and move forward at pace which is right for you but which is getting you out of danger as quickly as possible. Something else to do with that is putting yourself first. This is important, this is so important. Putting your health first should be a priority above anything. There is school, work, after school clubs, hobbies and all of that. And whilst I'm not saying or advocating just forgetting about all of them because that's not possible. If any of these things are making it hard for you to move forward, then you have to stop that. Talking to somebody about maybe adjusting what you're doing at school or work, taking the pressure off so that you can focus on getting better and moving forward and getting to a healthier place. Fight for what you need. This is something that is very relevant for me. I'm lucky in that my mum works in the healthcare industry. She's a practice manager, so she knows the ins and outs of who to talk to. So when I've been turned away repeatedly, when I've had, when I've been denied treatment that I needed, 
we've known the right people to go to to try and get it. It's sad that it's never worked out because nobody feels that they can help me. If you're told that you're not enough of a priority or you, they don't think you need help, if you think you need help, if you think you need a certain type of help, whichever one it may be, whether inpatient, outpatient, day patient, um, therapy, whatever, you fight for it. You can't just sit back and just accept what they say. It, it might not get you anywhere, but you're never going to know unless you try. And it's exhausting. And if you have somebody on your side, you can get an advocate who can help you. And also, um, you know, if you're, if you're younger, then getting your parents to help you. If you're not, then um, yes, I would highly recommend getting an advocate. I'm having to get one for my house stuff. Don't really understand it, but apparently they do shit for you and fight for your cause. Now, the last thing that I'm going to say, which is probably the most important piece of advice that I can offer, something that I've found has helped me, not just in my eating disorder, but with my mental health problems in general, um, and that is being a robot. Sometimes there's so much thought and emotion and feelings behind doing things, about not wanting to do things, about wanting to do something else. This sounds so stupid and I don't know how best to describe it, but if I've needed to eat and I don't want to eat, you just do it, ro I just robotically do it and get it done, lie down, just almost disconnect my brain. And I know that sounds mental as I've been ruled by my brain for so long, but it's the only way that I've gotten through when I'm suicidal, when I want to self-harm, when I have to eat when I don't want to. Doing things robotically is the only way that I've managed to get through and it's something that takes a bit of practice and takes time but you can do it. Just see it as something like, robotic is the only way I can describe it, you, you're doing it. Don't think about it, just do it. Once it's done then if you have to think about it, think about it. But think of it as like it's something that you have to do. Like. A robot like moves its arm like if you press a button the robot moves its arm or whatever and that motion has to get done because you've triggered it off so just say right well I have to do this I don't want to do it I'm not thinking about it and do it and eventually it does become second nature and it becomes easier that's something that's helped me a lot I know it doesn't probably doesn't make much sense I want to wrap this video up by saying that early intervention is vital the longer it goes on the harder it can be to recover and treatment isn't the most successful when early there's less chances of consequences and side effects if treated and caught early enough that's pretty much all i have to say on this i hope this has been helpful if you have any questions then please leave them down below if you have anything to say then say it please share this video and get it around because as i said it is eating disorders awareness week so we want to create awareness thank you very much for watching please like this video and subscribe and i'll see you again soon bye I am just talking shit, aren't I?